Hi, my name is Alana and welcome to the first episode of All Folked Up. This is a series where I'm going to be talking about folk music and history and how they connect to each other and how we in the present can connect to the past through music. So before we start anything, let's define what folk music is. So. Pretty much every scholar is going to have their own definition of folk music, but one of the most commonly accepted definitions is that folk music is the music of the people. It was composed by the people, it was sung by the people, and it was spread through the common folk of whatever particular region the music is native to. Every region has their own traditional music. All over the world there are so many different types of folk music that it would be nearly impossible for me to count them all and make them all into a series. So I'm going to be looking at the music of England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales because there's a lot of similarities between the traditional music of each of these countries and this type of folk music had a really strong influence on the music of other English language regions that came after. For example, America. When I say early English folk music, I mean as far back as written record can show us. So about the medieval era, and this era extends all the way up until about the late 19th century when the gramophone and the radio were invented, which in turn led to the advent of music that had widespread popular appeal that anyone anywhere could listen to. And one could say that this was the first real pop music. A term you might hear a lot when talking about the traditional music of this region is the ballad tradition. Now, a ballad is just the name of a very prominent type of folk song. Uh, they usually have many verses and a repetitive tune, sometimes a chorus that everyone sings along with while someone else sings the verses. Now, there are many types of ballads, but the most common is probably the narrative ballad. Narrative ballads, to put it simply, are songs that tell a story. Um, they told historical stories, or religious stories, or war stories, or fairy tales, and they were pretty popular around this time, and they're some of the best conserved ballads that we have. A sort of subcategory of the narrative ballad would be the broadside or the broadsheet ballads. These came into popularity around the 17th and 18th centuries, and they were published on newsprint, or broadsheets, and these would tell stories of real-life events like crimes or disasters with new lyrics set to a well-known tune. These were usually not super accurate and there was a lot of exaggeration, so one could say that this was like the first sensationalist news. Now there was this guy named Francis Child, and he lived in the 19th century, and throughout his life he collected and published traditional English language ballads. This collection came to be known as the Child Ballads. And looking at the collection as a whole, it gives us a lot of really valuable insight as to what the people of this time period were singing about. There were a lot of songs about love. There were songs about lovers meeting, lovers getting married, uh, lovers dying, lovers eloping, unrequited love, love dying, love being buried together. I mean, th the list goes on. You name it, they definitely wrote a song about it. Um, but a very popular song still known today is Greensleeves, which is about a guy singing to his lover who is rejecting him, which is kind of sad, but it just, just, just goes to show you that people were getting rejected even then, so if you ask someone to prom and they say no, don't worry, you're not the first. There were also a lot of ballads about adventure and magic and folk heroes who did great things, like, for example, King Arthur. Uh, there's a child ballad called The Marriage of Sir Gawain, where Gawain the Green Knight of Arthur's famous round table gets married to a girl who's been cursed by a witch and turns her into a beautiful maiden and they live happily ever after. Or you could look at one of the exhaustive list of child ballads about Robin Hood. Seriously, there are so many about Robin Hood. Another common theme was death. Sometimes lovers would die tragically, sometimes heroes would die tragically, not to mention the extensive number of murder ballads, which would include broadside ballads, not in war ballads, but people die, even in folk music. So what can we learn from this music? What, is, what do these themes tell us about the people who are singing these songs? Honestly, I think the answer is that it shows that they were a lot like us. I mean, I hear love songs on the radio probably every day, and 
songs about loss or sadness are all too popular. I mean, there's a whole genre of Spotify playlists for just feeling sad. Not to mention that all of these stories about magic and folk heroes, I mean, it's not so far off to say that these people were just as entranced by the thought of Robin Hood stealing from the rich or fighting off bandits as people today are entranced by superheroes like the Avengers or Superman or Batman. I mean, the songs that we have aren't necessarily the most popular folk songs being sung in these communities. They're just the ones that have survived. And I think a part of the reason why this music has survived for so long is because it's stuff that resonates with us no matter what time period we come from or where we are. I mean, love is something that spans generations. It spans centuries. And songs about love last that long too. Same goes for sadness, or a longing for adventure, or a love of magic and childhood wonder. And I think maybe that's why it's so important to look at folk music in this way, because it's telling stories that even though they were written hundreds of years ago, we still resonate with them today. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. Did I make any mistakes? Any questions, comments, concerns? Pop them right down in the comment section below, and I will see you next week for another episode of All Folked Up. Bye!